A breakup is a traumatic experience and some people have a hard time dealing with a breakup. In this video, I'm going to share with you strategies that you can adopt if you want to build resilience after this breakup. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong about you suffering from this breakup and we will uncover the real reason why you suffer right now. As you know, I'm a strong believer that explaining things uh, is the best way for you to be empowered and make uh, the right decisions, whether you want to get back with your ex, whether you want to move on from this relationship, I'll explain everything after the video. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, understand and remember that suffering isn't a weakness. The reason you suffer is simply because you are a human being who cares right and very interesting to know that the same area in the brain is activated um, and physical pain when we suffer from heartbreak i've been in your shoes and i know how devastating it could be i know how difficult it could be i know how you know we lose any form of motivation we feel anxious and i'll explain how you can overcome that in the next few slides and so when you have this idea that your ex is dealing with this breakup you know way easily he or she is not suffering he or she's already moved on it has nothing to do with really resilience it has nothing to do it has something to do with how they perceive this situation and of course if you are the dumpy if your ex decide to end the relationship of course you are receiving something you didn't uh, control the situation but also there's something and that's what we will uh, develop in this video something else than just you suffering a decision. It's because of your own story. Second thing you need to remember and to know is that your ex is not the cause of your pain. So you might be thinking, hold on, he or she's the one who broke up with me. And if we were still together, I wouldn't suffer this way. Of course, they created that condition. But what they did is simply made some unsolved trauma or experiences and now they're back at the surface so if you've been and i see that very often if you've been dealing with the breakup and it's been weeks or months and you still can't move on you still can't move forward it's really because there's something you haven't really understood it's really something you that you haven't dealt with and that's what i want you to do in this video in this video i'm going to share with you also at the end some practical uh, prompt that you can use to start a reflection. I know being heartbroken can be confusing. There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of content, there's a lot of material. In this video, I, will, uh, I really want you to have um, an actionable plan by the end of the video. So bear with me till the end. So remember this, while the pain of this breakup may push you towards your ex, the true healing is found within and embrace that inner strength to fill that void and find peace very often people want to fill a void with their partner and when this partner is leaving them they feel hopeless they feel lost and they don't know and that's the key message in this video if there's something you need to remember from this video is that the void that you have and we all have void we all have some kind of traumas or micro traumas or negative experiences on insecurities but the point is you have the ability to fill that void and relying on someone else relying on your partner is not the right way to do it let me explain. So where is this, come, this void coming from? Um, another way to see it um, from a psychological uh, point of view is codependency. The codependency takes its form when we grow up with a lack of love, with a lack of um, feeling of safety. When you are a kid, the only thing that matters is love from our parent and our, uh, uh, having this feeling of being safe. Also, as you grow up, is encouragement, recognition, autonomy. 
Okay, and when I don't know any perfect parents. And so very often parents will make mistakes. We'll fail to recognize, we'll fail to encourage, will be maybe too present and fail to let their kids to be autonomous. So when it's done in you know consistently, yes, that creates a lot of uh, things, a lot of insecurities that you will bring in adulthood. And so I'm picking one example, and at the end we're going to look at few case study of people who have developed codependency and how they did. Uh, and the work we've done uh, with them for them to be more secure, for them to find strength and resilience. So it's the idea of I'm not good enough to be loved. Because I start the story, I start my love story with this idea. I'm not good enough to be loved. Imagine the impact. Imagine the impact on how you behave with your partner. Imagine the impact on um, how you communicate, the reaction when your ex or when your partner is putting away or just asking that he needs or she needs a bit of space. When I talk about codependency in this video, I'm not talking about necessarily the clinical codependency. I see it as a spectrum and I find that people would display uh, behaviors of codependency after a breakup because of the rejection. So, where, so the idea is to shift and to understand that those beliefs will drive physical responses. When you feel inadequate, when you feel that you need to seek validation, that creates a feeling of anxiety, insecurity. And that triggers our uh, instinct to fight or fear at all costs. You know, the fight or flight that I discuss a lot in my videos. And in this case, the fear is about the fear of abandonment. Very often, people who have an anxious attachment style, they tend to create codependency relationships. And what it means is when you are in a relationship with someone and you have a codependent behaviors, you adopt toxic behaviors such as manipulation, sacrifice, overcharming, controlling an example, the sacrifice. I will put my needs after the needs of my partner because I'm not good enough to be loved. Therefore, I need to prove to my partner my worth. I don't care about what I need. I don't care that my partner is not treating me the way I would like to. I should be thankful that I have a relationship. Right. Making examples just for you to make sense, perhaps you would relate to that, you will relate to the other case studies I will share in this video later on. See it as an addiction. Codependency is an addiction. And very often when we analyze, there's been studies on people who are codependent, they display also a, a strong um, bias towards addiction. Very often, that void that we discussed before, they want to feel it. And they will feel it with drugs, with uh, um, gambling, with alcohol. Your addiction is about love. And love shouldn't be an addiction. This addiction is because you found a way to get your emotional needs met. And when you are addicted to something, there's always this contradiction of like, I perceive it as making me feel happy or joyful or to enjoy the moment. The pleasure, of course, there's an element of pleasure from it. But at the end of the day, the reason we drink too much, the reason we get addicted is because we want to escape reality. That's what you're doing in that relationship. And that's what you're doing if you are trying to get back with your ex or trying to deal with a breakup and find it really difficult is because this way for you to escape is not possible anymore. And for you, that's the only option. That's the only way. That's your only fix. Someone took away your drug and you don't know how to deal with life without this drug. And 
There's a concept uh, from Harvey Hendricks, uh, the, com the um, founder of Imago Therapy, which is a very interesting concept, is that love is about restoring past trauma. The idea is that we are attracted unconsciously, and that's the, the challenge that you have right now. All of those things are unconscious. You were not aware of those things. This breakup forces you to uh, face those things that were unconscious. And so when the, the theory from uh, Harvey Hendricks is that we are attracted unconsciously to people who have negative traits or behaviors uh, from our parents. And what we want to do when we seek a relationship with someone like this, we want to rewrite the history. We want to get back to that childhood and try to fix what was broken in the relationship we had with our parents. Let me explain a few case studies um, for you to understand. The critical one. And again, you might not recognize yourself on this. Maybe you'll find things. Um, I think I've listed four examples for you to get an idea. And please let me know in the comment section if you found that you recognize yourself in those case studies. So, Tom uh, grew up with a critical mother um, and he found himself attracted to partners who constantly pointed his flaws. So he worked on healing his past wound and understood that he didn't need validation from the relationship. So very often they would complain that their partner behaved like their mothers. And unconsciously, they are driven to those partners because they have the unconscious desire that things would be different in that partner. Okay? When you are not aware of that, how can you communicate with your partner your needs? Because you're acting like a kid. Let me give you another example. The absent dad. Sarah struggled with abandonment issues um, because her father left soon. So she found partners who were emotionally distant. There's nothing rational to that. And yet, I see every single day stories like that. Where you look from the distance, you feel, like, why would you pick people who are not emotionally available? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but that's your unconscious driver of you trying to rewrite the history. Competitive sibling. This one is a recent one. Lily, she grew up um, in the shadow of her uh, high achieving siblings. And she was attracted to a partner who made her feel inadequate. Again, it's unconscious. We are reproducing the same patterns. And so one, once you really reflect and heal those wounds, you can really confront your insecurities and cultivate that strong self of self-worth, strong sense of self-worth. You get my point? So perhaps that was the case, perhaps. And you don't have to, you know, having had a traumatic childhood, um, could be also how you perceive uh, things when you were six, eight, ten years old. Not being heard. Um, Emma never felt she was heard, and so she developed a pattern of falling for partners who were poor communicators. So when you recognize that you're drawn to those people, you can better learn how to be assertive, how to express your needs. Maybe change partners, maybe realizing that that's not actually someone who's compatible, because he or she is reproducing the same things that I didn't like about my father, I didn't like about my mother. Remember this, you are not this eight years old kid anymore. And when you start recognizing those beliefs, you can change the course of your history. What lies ahead is the rest of your life. It doesn't have to be driven by your trauma, by your insecurities, by how you perceived your life as an eight years old. Now you have the ability to create a healthier reality. You can work at being more independent, 
you have the choice. You can work at being more resilient. You can work at being more secure. That's your job right now. The world is full of possibilities and you can decide to free yourself from those kind of chains that keeps you attached to that little kid. In the previous video, I talked about inner child. It's really about making peace with that inner child. You don't have to act like that child anymore. You're an adult. Now you can understand psychology. You can understand how people function, the relationship dynamic. And realizing that some of your behaviors might just be the, the outcome, the result of those coping mechanisms that are very much unconscious. So bring them to your conscious. Bring more awareness and decide today to change the course of your history. A quick word about resilience, because that's the theme of this video. Um, if you find, if you look about resilience and different, different definitions, I like this one where you have different sort of um, categories around the purpose, around the connectivity, around positivity, obviously, the stress response, the emotions. So these are the things that I've covered in different videos. It's something that I cover in the new course that I will launch about how to heal. And have a look in the in the description. Um, I created a workbook for you to structure your thinking process. Um, if you want to heal from this breakup, I will basically list all the concepts that I've uh, listed in this video, plus the questions that you'll see at the end. So have a look, there's a link um, if you want to grab this workbook. But reframing thinking is one part of thing. You know, very often we are focusing on the negative threat, we are focusing on the bad news. So what about, and I'll, I'll explain later what questions you should ask yourself. What about taking that step and realizing today that you don't want to be that kid anymore? And you have the ability, trust me, you have the ability. I do that every single day with my clients. You have the ability to reframe this. So ask yourself this. And again, if you want to have the list of the questions, have a look at the workbook in the link. Um, there will be, you'll find all the questions. So what aspects of the relationship were healthy? How did your childhood experiences or attachments um, help you know, drive the, um, the codependency? Can you identify any patterns? Did you feel you prioritize your partner's needs in, instead of yours? How can you practice self-care, self-love? Um, how can you foster independence? Again, it's really about unlearning those things and try to replace with healthier patterns, with healthier um, habits. Sometimes we feel that life is like this and I've been like this forever and that's how it's meant to be. No. <laughs> That's not how it works. First of all, you recognize. That's why I make those videos. First of all, you understand. You understand how your brain works. You understand psychology. You understand how your partner might work. That's why I do a lot of videos on, on attachment. So understanding is a very important element. But now it's really about action. And it's really about taking that knowledge and changing your story. The story you tell yourself is so important. It could really drive not only the way you see life, but your physical health. If you're constantly thinking negatively, trust me, and there's been studies about that, you will have a higher likelihood to have heart disease. Stress is the worth in, you know, uh, in terms of health and, 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 and life and um, life expectancy. Stress is the worst thing that could happen nowadays. You. And when you are focusing on those things, when you are very negative, when you are depressed, when you don't take care of yourself and uh, generate a lot of cortisol in your body, you will die younger. Simply as that. So ask yourself these questions. Let me know in the comment section if you found this helpful. Have a look in the comments, not in the comments, but in, um, in the description to get your workbook. I will see you next time. We're going to talk about healing as well. I'm 
doing this series to really help you feel better as soon as possible. Take care of yourself. Bye. for a long time. Get up, now I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer.